forces, an introduction. We have two goals today. We're going to start talking about force concepts in general, but we'll also learn about three specific forces, the force of gravity, the force of tension, and what we call the normal force. So what is a force anyway? Well, a force is a push or a pull. It is a vector, so it has a direction associated with it. You push in a particular direction, for instance. And forces are associated with interactions between objects. For instance, if you sit on a chair, there's an interaction between you and the chair. The chair exerts a force on you, and you exert a force on the chair. Forces always come in equal and opposite pairs. So the force the chair exerts on you is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force you exert on the chair. The MKS unit of force is known as the Newton, and one Newton happens to be one kilogram meter per second squared. Okay, so let's get into the force of gravity. This is a great force to look at because an example, it's an example of a force that exists between objects without them needing to be in contact with one another. So often you think of force arising from contact, which is true, it often does, but you don't have to have contact to have an interaction. Okay, so here's an example. The sun exerts a force of gravity on the earth. The earth exerts a force of gravity back on the sun. You might think that even the, because the sun is so huge compared to the earth, that the force it exerts on the earth is much larger than the force the earth exerts back on the sun, but that would be incorrect. In fact, those forces are equal and opposite. And by the way, the fact that forces come in equal and opposite pairs is known as Newton's third law. Okay, so as we just said, when two objects interact by the force of gravity, each object experiences a force of the same size, and that force has a direction, and it always points back toward the object that is applying that force. Okay, and again, the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Okay, so what does the force of gravity do? Well, as you've seen, if you drop something, it falls down, and it gives us an acceleration, and that acceleration is constant. Okay, so if we're at or near the Earth's surface, we say the gravitational force exerted on an object of mass m by the Earth has a magnitude of m times g, and it's directed down. What is g? Well, g is the value of the Earth's gravitational field at the surface. We often call that the acceleration due to gravity, but really a better name for it is the Earth's gravitational field. So g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram directed down. You might have seen that as 9.8 meters per second squared. That's an equivalent unit, but it's nice to think of it as newtons per kilogram. Every kilogram of mass of an object experiences 9.8 newtons of force because of its interaction with the Earth. And there's what we call our free body diagram. Free body diagram is a diagram that shows all the forces acting on the object. So as the ball falls, it's just got the gravity acting down. It's a constant force, and so it gives a constant acceleration. Okay, so on to the force of tension. So tension is a force applied by a string or a rope. And we usually label that with F sub T, or sometimes just T. So usually we assume that we're using an ideal rope with no mass and it doesn't stretch. One thing to remember is you can't push with a rope. The tension force acting on an object always goes away from that object along the string or rope. Okay, so here's an example. This is kind of like a tether ball, it's a ball on a string. And if we draw the free body diagram there, we've got the gravitational force on the object acting straight down toward the center of the Earth, and this is what we were saying, the tension force goes away from the object along the string. Okay, finally we'll come to this third force we're talking about today, the normal force. And the normal force does involve contact between objects. So when things are in contact, there's a, an interface and the normal force is perpendicular to that interface. Okay, there's a might be a parallel component parallel to the interface. That would be the friction force. We'll talk about that at some later time. Okay, so normal is really just a fancy physics word for perpendicular. 
and we symbolize the normal force with F sub N. And we just said that the normal force is perpendicular to the contact interface. Okay, so here's an example of box on a table. You've got the free body diagram there. The earth is trying to pull the box down through the table. The table says, I don't think so, and it pushes up with a normal force that balances out the force of gravity. So the box remains at rest. Well, what if you have a little cart on a ramp? Well, mg is still down. The gravitational force is down toward the center of the earth. The normal force is perpendicular to the interface, perpendicular to the slope. Okay. So in that case, the cart would accelerate down the slope. Let's look at the normal force a little bit more. How does an object lose contact with another object? Well, that's when the normal force goes to zero. So here's our box on the table. Let's say we want to try and pull it up off the table. So we'll uh, attach a string to it and pull up. But there's our starting free body diagram. Here's our string. We'll pull up just a little bit. So as we pull up just a little bit, we get a small tension force up, and the normal force actually goes down. Okay, so the table recognizes that the string is supporting part of the weight, and it doesn't have to push up as hard. The, the box is really not embedded into the table as much as it was before. Okay, box is still firmly in contact with the table, though. We'll pull up a little harder, still have a normal force, even harder, a little less normal force. Finally, we pull up with a force that matches mg, and this is where the box is just starting to come off the table. And if we apply even larger tension force, it will definitely come up off the table. Okay, the normal force is also the force that would be measured by a scale placed between the objects in contact. Okay, so if we put a scale in between the box and the table, and the scale reads 15 newtons, then that is the force that the table was applying to the box when the box was just sitting on the table. If we attach the string to that, you would see the scale reading gradually go down as you pull harder and harder up on the string. Okay, so that is a good introduction to forces and a little bit more of free body diagrams.